Hello everyone and welcome. Have you ever wondered why don't we aerate coffee like we do with wine? Could there be some benefits that we are missing out on? In fact, there are a couple specialty shops that I visited in the past who do make an effort to pour their coffee from a very high point. Some of them have been very adamant about its effect on flavor, and I've been more and more interested in the idea. So perhaps this discussion is best started by talking about the two main effects you'd expect from aerating wine. First, it encourages evaporation of volatile compounds that are dissolved in the liquid. With wine, there are some undesirable flavor compounds that are more likely to evaporate than the good flavors we want. Presuming a similar evaporation of negative flavors occurs in coffee, this could be a benefit to us. Although I don't know if that presumption is really safe to make just yet. Second, aeration causes increased oxidation. While this may help some wines age more quickly and take on a complexity in flavor, much like when a fruit begins to oxidize and brown, the same idea may not apply so simply to brewed coffee. Chlorogenic acids, for instance, play a huge role in the flavor of coffee, and these in particular are important when it comes to oxidation. These acids break down into quinic and caffeic acid, which give off a bitter and generally less desirable flavor than their parent acids. With increased oxidation, we are speeding up that breakdown process. Other aromas and oils are also affected negatively by oxidation. And we generally perceive these collective changes as staling in coffee. But some serious questions remain open-ended. Are we evaporating negative flavors more than we are creating them through oxidation? And how strong of an impact is oxidation really having depending on how you pour? If we pour 10 inches versus 18 inches above the cup, how much is that really affecting oxidation and does it change it in our favor? These are really good questions and I don't know that anyone studied them just yet. So all I can really do is give it my best shot and test it out. I'm going to go ahead and brew a pour over on a V60 and I'll be splitting it into three cups. The first cup I'm pouring as you normally would, maybe even a little bit closer to ensure I'm not getting any significant amount of aeration from this height. The second cup I will pour about 10 inches above the cup and the third I will pour 18 inches. I think anything higher than that is just asking for hot coffee to splash everywhere, including on me. I'll mark them on the bottom before mixing them up and giving them a blind taste. I'm also leaving a portion inside the original brewing device and I'll taste that separately as I won't be able to do it blind. But I'm curious to see if there's any major difference when you don't pour it into another cup at all. So just before we start, it hadn't quite occurred to me that I could maybe tell the difference uh, by the foam on top. So I'm just going to scrape as much as I can off, but it's already seemed to dissipate a little bit as I let it sit to cool down. Okay, so we'll give these a mix and I'll just mix them on the table until I can't tell which one is which. And I'm already, I have no idea. So um, we'll put them back together. So let's give these a taste, and I am going to be spitting them back out, and I'm sorry if that's a bit gross, but I'm filming this video at about 9 p.m., and I do it happily for you guys. So please like this video and subscribe. So nice acidity on the first cup. Potentially something a little bit stronger there, maybe a little bit bitter. That's interesting. Okay, so the second cup and the third cup taste a little bit more similar. Um, this is quite fruity and a little bit more balanced. These taste really quite similar. I'm not sure that I could taste the difference, but we'll go back to them. And let's see if it's just this first cup has changed. It's got a nice little bit of sweetness to it, some kind of black cherry cola. This is a Kenyan coffee, by the way, that we have here at the cafe, and it's really delicious. Um, it is supposed to have that level, a nice intensity of acidity um, with a little bit of sweetness coming through. So it's definitely presenting nice in all three cups, but let's go back again and see what we can taste. Okay, so the second cup, I think is definitely tasting a little more hollow but it's, it's really splitting hairs here. 
but if I had to say it would taste a little bit weaker, a little bit less flavorful. Okay, so after a few passes, I would definitely say that these two cups are a little lighter, a little weaker, but I would say that the first cup is quite balanced and quite enjoyable. I think more enjoyable than the other two. There's a sweetness and a richness there that I'm not getting in the other cups. And maybe that third cup has just a touch more floral note. It's got a bit more of a well-rounded fruit to it. I would certainly say I, I like the second cup the least. Um, I like the first cup the most. And the third cup somewhere in between for me. If I had to guess, I would think that this cup was the non-aerated cup. And I think that this is the 18 inches and that this is the 10. Let's find out. So this, whoa, so this was the 18 inches. This cup was the 10 inches. And this was the no pour. So that is really quite interesting, not what I'd expected. So this tells me that either you're better off doing no pour at all or a very high pour to get an effect. I'm surprised that the 10 inches wasn't enough, and I don't know that I could really pour a cup of coffee 18 inches above each time. There was a lot of coffee that splashed all over the place, and that's just too high. I'd be curious to see if there's a middle point between 10 and 18, but I'll leave that for another day. But now that we know what these three are, I'm curious to try what's left in the original device. So let's give that a taste. It's still quite nice. go back and compare that. Honestly, it's pretty similar to the third cup here, the, the no aeration pour. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these two, quite honestly. And one thing I'd actually forgot to do is try and give them a smell. And I'm not sure now that I know what the copies are, if it'll make a difference, but I'm curious to see if there's any aromatic difference in the three cups. Yeah, that would be a no. So that really does it for this video. All in all, it was fun to try the different heights of aeration, but honestly, even though I could taste some of the differences between these three, they weren't so different that it would be worth pouring 12 to 18 inches above the cup. I'm just not sure that it's worth the effort, especially if you're in a cafe. I mean, if you're at home, why not? Give it a shot, try it out. But I don't think that it's going to be some major part of my coffee brewing moving forward. Thank you so much for watching and please remember to like the video and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Comment below as well. I love hearing from you guys and I wanna know if you've done something like this with your coffee. I will see you all again in the next video. Have a great day.